ऑल इंडिया रेडियो प्रेजेंट्स मॉर्निंग न्यूज गुड मॉर्निंग आई एम सारा मुश्तबा एंड विथ मी इज सुभद्रा रामचंद्रन द हेडलाइंस प्राइम मिनिस्टर नरेंद्र मोदी टू पार्टिसिपेट वर्चुअली इन फर्स्ट एवर आई टू यू टू समिट अलॉन्ग विद लीडर्स ऑफ इसराइल यूएई एंड यूएस टूडे people aged between 18 and 59 years to get free covid booster doses from tomorrow at government centers defense minister rajnath singh says india is witnessing a transitional phase towards self reliance in the defense sector sri lankan prime minister ranil wickremasinghe asks military to take all necessary steps to restore order rishi sunak tops the first round of voting in uk prime minister's race Annual Kavad Yatra begins today after a gap of 2 years. Mehuli Ghosh and Shahut Tushar Mane clinched second gold for India in ISSF Shooting World Cup. And in cricket, India to take on England in second ODI of 3 match series at Lords in London this evening. Prime Minister Narendra Modi will participate in the first ever I2U2 India Israel UAE USA Leaders Virtual Summit today. The summit will also witness the participation of Israeli Prime Minister Yair Lapid, UAE President Mohammed bin Zayed Al Nahyan, and US President Joe Biden. The leaders will discuss the possible joint projects within the framework of I2U2 as well as the other common areas of mutual interest to strengthen the economic partnership in trade and investment in the respective regions and beyond. These projects can serve as a model for economic cooperation and offer opportunities for businessmen and workers. Our correspondent has more details. The I2U2 grouping was conceptualized during the meeting of the foreign ministers of the four countries held on 18th October last year. Each country also has Sherpa level interactions regularly to discuss the possible areas of cooperation. I2U2 is aimed to encourage joint investments in six mutually identified areas such as water, energy, transportation, space, health and food security. It intends to mobilize private sector capital and expertise to help modernize the infrastructure low carbon development pathways for the industries improve public health and promote the development of critical emerging and green technologies on pamish ar news delhi people aged between 18 and 59 years can get free precaution doses of the covid vaccine at government vaccination centers under a 75 day special drive starting tomorrow Briefing the media in New Delhi yesterday after the cabinet meeting, Information and Broadcasting Minister Anurag Singh Thakur said, "India is celebrating 75 years of independence and on the occasion of Azadi ka Amrit Kaal from tomorrow till the next 75 days, citizens above 18 years of age will be given booster doses free of cost." He said the union cabinet has approved the proposal to mark the 75th anniversary of India's independence. 15 जुलाई से अगले 75 दिन तक देश के 18 वर्ष से ज्यादा उम्र के जितने भी नागरिक होंगे उनको बूस्टर डोज बिल्कुल मुफ्त में देने का निर्णय लिया गया है इससे पहले फ्रंट लाइन वर्कर्स थे कोविड वॉरियर्स थे या फिर 60 साल से ज्यादा के जो नागरिक थे उनके लिए था अब इसको 18 साल से ज्यादा की उम्र वालों के लिए साफ कर दिया है कि बिल्कुल मुफ्त बूस्टर डोज अब आप लगवा सकते हो और ये सभी सरकारी केंद्रों पर जगह जगह पर उपलब्ध होगा We spoke to Dr. N.K. Arora, Chairman of COVID Task Force, about the government's decision on booster doses. This is a welcome step by Government of India. The whole purpose is that every eligible adult who has completed six months after the last dose should get a precaution dose. It is very important to remember that COVID is still around, and as part of our genomic surveillance, we have found that every week or second week there are new lineage of Omicron which keep emerging. And so far, we have been protected from serious disease, hospitalization, and death primarily because. The Cabinet Committee on Economic Affairs (CCEA) has approved Tarang Hill Ambaji Abu Road new rail line that will traverse through parts of Gujarat and Rajasthan to provide connectivity and improve mobility. Mr. Thakur said the estimated cost of this project is over 2,700 crore rupees and will be completed by 2026-27. 
एक ऐतिहासिक निर्णय लिया गया है कि आबू अंबाजी और तरंगा को रेलवे नेटवर्क से जोड़ा जाएगा 116 किलोमीटर की यह नई रेलवे लाइन मात्र चार सालों में बनकर तैयार होगी दो हजार करोड़ रूपये इसके ऊपर खर्च आएगा और अगले चार वर्षो में जब इस पे काम चल रहा होगा तो लगभग चालीस लाख मैंडेट इसमें होंगे जिसमें से लोगों को रोजगार स्वरोजगार के अवसर मिलेंगे Ambaji is a famous important pilgrimage destination. It is one of the 51 Shakti Peets in India and attracts millions of devotees from Gujarat as well as other parts of the country and abroad every year. The construction of this line will facilitate easy travel for millions of devotees. Talking to AIA News, people from different walks of life hailed the approval of the new rail line. यह जो नई रेल लाइन स्वीकृत हुई है आबू रोड से अंबाजी श्रद्धालुओं को फायदा मिलेगा अंबाजी में खूब विकास होगा एक नया रेल मार्ग चालू होने से माउंट आबू पे इस रूट के टूरिस्ट के लिए भी यात्रा सुलभ होगी तो हर आदमी माउंट आबू घूम सकेगा तो मेरे हिसाब से पर्यटन की दृष्टि से ये बहुत लाभकारी रहेगा ब्रह्मा कुमारी संस्थान का अंतर्राष्ट्रीय मुख्यालय माउंट आबू होने के कारण दुनिया भर से लोग आते हैं और जो लोग माउंट आबू आते हैं वो अम्बाजी जरूर जाना चाहते हैं और तारंग हिल जाना चाहते हैं तो वहाँ इससे पर्यटन को बढ़ावा तो मिलेगा इस साथ ही रोजगार में भी वृद्धि होगी इसके लिए भारत सरकार को बहुत बहुत बधाई देते हैं The cabinet also cleared establishment of Gati Shakti University at Vadodara's National Academy of Indian Railways where all modes of transport related training will be given. The minister said the Gati Shakti Vishwavidyalaya at Vadodara is envisioned to be a key enabler for expanding transportation sector. Prime Minister Narendra Modi has said the cabinet decision will further India's vaccination coverage and create a healthier nation. In a tweet Mr Modi said vaccination is an effective means to fight COVID-19. Mr Modi said the Taranga Hill Ambaji Abu Road rail line which has been approved by the cabinet will boost connectivity and further socio-economic progress. He said it also fulfills a long-standing demand of improving access to Ambaji. Defence Minister Rajnath Singh has said India is witnessing a transitional phase towards self-reliance in defence sector. Speaking at an event, the defence minister said senior officials of defence public sector undertaking should work together to ensure that their companies are among world's best. मिनिस्ट्री ने 2025 तक लगभग पौने दो लाख करोड़ रुपए के डिफेंस प्रोडक्शन का लक्ष्य रखा है लक्ष्य हमारा बहुत बड़ा है लेकिन हम आठ सौ लक्ष्य को हम प्राप्त करेंगे और जिसमें 35 टू 40,000 करोड़ रुपए का एक्सपोर्ट भी शामिल है टारगेट इसका रखा है कि 24, 25 तक हमारी कोशिश होगी कि हम इस टारगेट को अचीव करें मुझे बताया गया है कि इस लक्ष्य को प्राप्त करने की दिशा में डीपीएसयू का मेजर रोल होगा और मैं जानता भी हूं और इसमें सेवेंटी से एट्टी तक हुए अपना योगदान देंगे Mr Stay Singh listed out various initiatives taken by the defense ministry to achieve self reliance including simplification of acquisition process of defense equipment and platforms under defense acquisition procedure 2020 and increase FDI limit to 74% under automatic route and up to 100% under government route Ministry of Agriculture and Farmers Welfare is organizing a two-day national conference of state agriculture and horticulture ministers in Bengaluru today. Union Agriculture and Farmers Welfare Minister Narendra Singh Tomar, Union Ministers of State for Agriculture and Farmers Welfare Shushri Shobha Karandeje and Kailash Chaudhary and Ministers of Agriculture and Horticulture of the states will participate in the conference. One of the major interventions of this conference will be launching of ENAM platform by Union Agriculture Minister to promote trade and marketing of agriculture produce for getting better prices of agriculture commodities to farmers. This conference is being organized to commemorate 75 years of Azadi Ka Amrit Mahotsav, which is a step forward towards building a self-reliant India. The BJP has asked former Vice President Hamid Ansari and the Congress to come clean on the claims of a Pakistani journalist that he had visited India five times during UPA rule and passed on sensitive information collected in the country to Pakistan's spy agency ISI. Briefing media, BJP spokesperson Gaurav Bhatia cited Pakistani journalist Nusrat Mirza's purported comments that he had visited India on Mr. Ansari's invitations and also met him. भारत पूरे विश्व में आतंकवाद के खिलाफ जो मुहिम है उसमें अग्रणी भूमिका निभा रहा है और कांग्रेस की सरकार 2005 से 2011 के बीच में पांच बार ऐसे व्यक्ति को भारत आने का निमंत्रण देती है वो भी हमिद अंसारी जी देते हैं वही जानकारी हमारे देश की सेना हमारे देश के नागरिकों के खिलाफ उसका इस्तेमाल किया जाता है 
तो सबसे पहले तो देश की जनता ये पूछना चाहती है कि आतंकवाद का खात्मा करने के लिए क्या कांग्रेस की जो सरकार रही उसकी ये नीति थी क्या ये कांग्रेस पार्टी को जवाब नहीं देना चाहिए कि ऐसा क्यों हुआ Responding to the allegation, former Vice President said that falsehood has been unleashed on him in a section of media and by official spokesperson of BJP. In a statement, Mr. Hamid Ansari said that he never invited Nusrat Mirza to India and met him. Mr. Ansari said that it is a known fact that invitations to foreign dignitaries by Vice President of India is on the advice of the government generally through the Ministry of External Affairs. You are listening to the Morning News on All India Radio. A reminder of the headlines before we move on. Prime Minister Narendra Modi to participate virtually in first ever I2U2 summit along with leaders of Israel, UAE and US today. People aged between 18 and 59 years to get free COVID booster doses from tomorrow at government centers. Defence Minister Rajnath Singh says India is witnessing a transitional phase toward self-reliance in defence sector. Sri Lankan Prime Minister Ranil Vikrama Singhe asks military to take all necessary steps to restore order. Rishi Sunak tops first round of voting in UK Prime Minister's race. Annual Kavad Yatra begins today after a gap of two years. Mehuli Ghosh and Shahu Tushar Main clinch second go for India in ISSF Shooting World Cup. And in cricket, India to take on England in second ODI of three-match series at Lords in London this evening. For quick news updates round the clock, follow us on our Twitter handle at AIR News Alerts. Competition के अगर आप कर रहे हैं तैयारी तो उनके लिए All India Radio पर हम लाए हैं अभ्यास एक ऐसा कार्यक्रम जिसमें आप पूछेंगे सवाल WhatsApp number nine two eight nine zero nine four zero double four पर या फिर email करेंगे अभ्यास dot AIR News at gmail dot com पर और हमारे विशेषज्ञ देंगे इसका जवाब आपका अभ्यास हमारा प्रयास अपने बिजनेस को बढ़ाने के लिए लीजिए आकाशवाणी का सहयोग और दीजिए उसे बुलंदियों के पंख आपका बिजनेस लोकल है या राष्ट्रीय आकाशवाणी देती है उपभोक्ताओं तक पहुंचने का हर विकल्प और अब तो आप घर दफ्तर या दुकान पर बैठे बैठे कर सकते हैं आकाशवाणी के किसी भी केंद्र के लिए विज्ञापनों की बुकिंग आकाशवाणी के विभिन्न चैनलों पर विज्ञापन देना सुलभ और सस्ता बुकिंग है तो संपर्क करें आठ सात शून्य 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 एक चार दो चार दो पर आठ सात शून्य 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 एक चार दो चार दो वेलकम बैक लिस्निंग टू द मॉर्निंग न्यूज Several states across the country are battling heavy rain and flood-like situation. Incessant rains continue to lash Telangana, especially the northern districts of the state. Heavy rains hit Nirbal, Nizamabad, Karimnagar, Pedapalli, Asafabad for the sixth consecutive day. At least 10 people died in rain-related incidents during the past week and hundreds of villages in the worst hit districts are inundated. The Met Department has issued a red alert in the state stating that heavy to very heavy rains are likely at some places in about 10 districts including Mancherial, Rajanna Sirsela, Karim Nagar and Pedapalli districts today. Our Hyderabad correspondent has filed this report. There is no respite from rains even after about a week especially for the people in north and northeast districts of the state swollen streams and roads being washed away are posing challenges for relief activities several villages in worst hated districts have been cut off as the road connectivity got snapped due to overflowing streams it is estimated that nearly 10000 people have been shifted to safer locations at different districts in the state educational institutions have been closed for three more days and all scheduled examinations have been postponed people have been advised by the authorities not to venture out unless it is unavoidable meanwhile met officials warned of heavy rains for a few more days in telangana lakshmi air news hyderabad incessant rains also continue in andhra pradesh the flood situation in aluri sitaramaraju east godavari and eluri districts is worsening with rapidly increasing water level in godavari river NDRF and SDRF teams are deployed in Aluri Sitaramaraju district to tackle the situation. In Gujarat the situation in the flood affected areas is slowly improving. According to official sources over 20000 people who were shifted to safer places have returned to their homes. However about 7000 people are still taking shelter due to the flood waters. More details from our Ahmedabad correspondent. 
स्टेट रेवेन्यू मिनिस्टर राजेंद्र त्रिवेदी हैज सेड दैट द स्टेट एडमिनिस्ट्रेशन इज ऑन हाई अलर्ट फॉलोइंग फोरकास्ट ऑफ मोर रेन्स इन सौराष्ट्र एंड साउथ गुजरात गवर्नमेंट इज प्रोवाइडिंग फूड एंड मेडिसिन टू द पीपल शिफ्टेड टू द सेफर प्लेसेज एटलीस्ट फाइव हंड्रेड एंड सेवेंटी फाइव पर्सन हैव बीन रेस्क्यूड इन द डिफरेंट एरियाज ऑफ द स्टेट रिलीफ वर्क हैव बीन गियर्ड अप बाय द डिस्ट्रिक्ट एडमिनिस्ट्रेशन विद द हेल्प ऑफ एनडीआरएफ एंड एसडीआरएफ इन द फ्लड एफेक्टेड नवसारी वलसाड एंड छोटा उदयपुर डिस्ट्रिक्ट स्टेट गवर्नमेंट हैज अनाउंसड केस कॉम्पेन्सेशन फॉर द पीपल एफेक्टेड बाय द फ्लड सर्वे बिगिन्स टू एसरटेन द डेमेज टू द हाउसेज एंड अदर प्रॉपर्टीज इलेक्ट्रिसिटी हैज बीन रेस्टोर्ड इन सेवन हंड्रेड एंड सिक्सटी नाइन एफेक्टेड विलेजेस द स्टेट ट्रांसपोर्ट बसेज ऑल्सो स्टार्टेड रनिंग इन ऑल एफेक्टेड एरियाज योगेश पंडिया एयर न्यूज अहमदाबाद श्रीलंकन प्राइम मिनिस्टर रानिल विक्रमा सिंगे हैज आस्ट द मिलिट्री टू डू वट एवर इज नेसेसरी टू रिस्टोर ऑर्डर आफ्टर प्रोटेस्टर स्टॉम डिज ऑफिस मिस्टर विक्रमा सिंगे हैज बीन अपॉइंटेड एक्टिंग प्रेजिडेंट बाई प्रेजिडेंट गौताबाया राजपक्षा हु हैज फ्लड द कंट्री बट द डिसीजन टू लीव हिम इन चार्ज ट्रिगर्ड फर्दर प्रोटेस्ट डिमांडिंग दट द प्राइम मिनिस्टर मस्ट ऑल्सो गो श्रीलंका हैज बीन सफरिंग फ्रॉम इट्स वर्स्ट इकोनॉमिक क्राइसिस इन डेकेड्स Many blame the Rajapaksha administration for the crisis and see Ranil Wickremasinghe who became prime minister in May as part of the problem. For the second time in less than a week protesters broke into a highly secure state building yesterday. This time it was the prime minister's office. In a television address Mr Wickremasinghe called on protesters to leave his occupied office and other state buildings and cooperate with authorities. Former British Finance Minister Rishi Sunak won the first round of voting to replace Boris Johnson as the United Kingdom's Prime Minister and leader of the Conservative Party. Sunak secured 88 votes of Tory MPs ahead of Junior Trade Minister Penny Mordaunt on 67 and Foreign Secretary Liz Truss on 50. With this there are six candidates remaining in the running to succeed Johnson two candidates finance minister Nazim Zahavi and former foreign minister Jeremy Hunt were knocked out from the race Sunak whose resignation last week led to Johnson's downfall got the backing of 88 out of the Conservative Party's 358 lawmakers Zahavi who assumed charge as the finance minister after Sunak's resignation and former foreign minister Hunt were eliminated as they couldn't secure the minimum benchmark of 30 votes three other candidates were knocked out earlier Burn and Plastic Surgery Department of Aims in Delhi in collaboration with Association of Plastic Surgeons of India APSI will organize APSI Sushruta Film Festival ASFF 2022 to observe the 12th National Plastic Surgery Day tomorrow The department head of burn and plastic surgery Dr Professor Manish Singha said that this film festival is on the theme of changing lives with plastic and reconstructive surgery जैसा हम देखते हैं कि एक्सीडेंट्स में लोगों के अंग कट जाते हैं उंगलियां कट जाती हैं या हाथ कट जाते हैं उनको वापस प्लास्टिक सर्जरी के द्वारा जोड़ा जा सकता है मरीज को सेफली ट्रांसपोर्ट करने के बाद जल्दी से जल्दी अंग को अगर हम किसी प्लास्टिक की थैली में डाल दें और उस थैली को हम किसी बर्फ के बॉक्स में डाल दें ध्यान रखें जो अंग है वो बर्फ के डायरेक्ट कॉन्टैक्ट में न आए बीच में प्लास्टिक जरूर हो उससे अगर हम जल्दी से जल्दी उसको अस्पताल भेजते हैं छह घंटे के अंदर अंदर यह ऑपरेशन सक्सेसफुली हो सकता है लेकिन जितनी जल्दी मैंने उतना बेहतर है और मेरी रिक्वेस्ट है कि इस मैसेज को जितने ज्यादा लोगों में आप फैलाएं उतना ज्यादा हम प्लास्टिक सर्जरी के द्वारा लोगों को फायदा दें दी एनुअल कांवर यात्रा विल बिगिन टुडे ऑन द फर्स्ट डे ऑफ द होली मंथ ऑफ सावन दी एनुअल पिलग्रमेज इज रिजर्विंग आफ्टर अ गैप ऑफ ऑलमोस्ट टू ईयर्स द यात्रा व्हिच वाज कैंसिल्ड इन द लास्ट टू ईयर्स ड्यू टू द कोविड-19 आउटब्रेक इज एक्सपेक्टेड टू बी अटेंडेड बाय अराउंड 3 टू 4 क्रॉस डेविटीज दिस ईयर During the holy expedition, pilgrims travel on foot to collect the holy water from Ganga River and carry it to shrines in their localities. Devotees chant slogans in praise of Lord Shiva and sing bhajans and kirtans while taking part in the yatra. arrangements to manage such a large gathering the kaur yatra will conclude on the 26th of this month more details from our lakhnau correspondent
उत्तर प्रदेश गवर्नमेंट हैज मेड इलेबोरेट अरेंजमेंट रिगार्डिंग द कांवड़ यात्रा एडीजी लॉ एंड ऑर्डर प्रशांत कुमार टोल्ड एआईआर न्यूज दैट कोऑर्डिनेशन विद अदर स्टेट्स हैज आल्सो बीन इस्टेब्लिश्ड एंड पुलिस इज मेकिंग श्योर दैट द कांवड़िया गेट ऑल काइंड ऑफ फैसिलिटीज इंक्लूडिंग प्रॉपर फूड एंड क्लीन टॉयलेट टू मेंटेन पीस एंड हारमोनी ड्यूरिंग द यात्रा पुलिस हैव ऑल्सो स्पोकन टू लीडर्स ऑफ डिफरेंट कम्युनिटीज हम लोगों ने सभी धर्म गुरुओं को कॉन्फिडेंस में लिया उनके द्वारा अपील भी की गई ऐसे भी दृष्टांत आते हैं जब हमारे मुस्लिम भाई की कावड़ियों के हेल्प के लिए अपना कैंप लगाते हैं और उनके धार्मिक रीति रिवाजों का ख्याल रखते हुए सारी व्यवस्थाएं की जाती हैं तो हम सभी स्टेक होल्डर्स को साथ रखेंगे तथा जो भी जहां भी ट्रैफिक डाइवर्ट करने की आवश्यकता होगी इस संबंध में अंतर्राज्यीय बैठक का आयोजन किया जा चुका है और जिसमें सभी प्रदेश जहां से भी श्रद्धालु आते हैं जल लेने हरिद्वार की तरफ उनके यहां से भी व्यवस्थाएं की जा रही हैं फॉर द फर्स्ट टाइम यूपी पुलिस विल ऑल्सो डिस्ट्रीब्यूट ट्राई कलर फ्लैग्स ड्यूरिंग कांवड़ यात्रा इन सीरीज ऑफ आजादी का अमृत महोत्सव सेलिब्रेशन सुशील चंद्र तिवारी ए न्यूज लखनऊ And now let's listen to our special program Azadi ka safar highlighting the importance of the day during the freedom struggle Azadi ka amrit mahotsav Azadi ka safar with AIR news birth of a nation India's glorious freedom struggle is one of the greatest struggles the modern world has ever witnessed. AIR News brings you a glimpse of the struggle every day. Today we remember social reformer and educationist Gopal Ganesh Agarkar. Gopal Ganesh Agarkar was born on the 14th of July 1856 in Karad Taluk of Satara district Maharashtra. He first met Tilak at the Deccan College where they were classmates. The Tilak Agarkar duo set up a series of educational institutions to promote education and social reform and instill patriotism among the masses. He was the first editor of Kesari, the leading Marathi newspaper founded by Lokmanya Tilak. Gopal Agarkar believed that the need for social reform was more immediate. Thus, he started his own periodical, Sudharak, in which he campaigned against the injustices of untouchability and the caste system. marriage the great social reformer continued to work till his last breath and died on the 17th of june 1895 air news pays tribute to the great nationalist Also on the 14th of July 1942 Quit India resolution was passed by the Congress Working Committee After the failure of the Crips mission Gandhi ji called for a voluntary British withdrawal from India From 29th April to the 1st of May 1942 the All India Congress Committee assembled in Allahabad to discuss the resolution of the Working Committee Although Gandhi ji was absent from the meeting many of his points were admitted into the resolution the most significant of them being commitment to non-violence on the 14th of july 1942 the congress working committee met at vartha and resolved that it would authorize gandhi ji to take charge of the non-violent mass movement the resolution generally referred to as a quit india resolution was to be approved by the all india congress committee meeting in bombay in august 
on 7th and 8th August 1942. The All India Congress Committee met in Bombay and ratified the Quit India Resolution when Gandhiji gave the mantra of Do or Die. We also remember martyr Gangaram. He was serving the English East India Company army but left it during the first war of independence in 1857 for taking part in the resistance against the British rule. He fought the British on several occasions and also offered financial assistance to his fellow rebels and encouraged them to attack British establishments. Gangaram was caught by the company troops in one of their attacks on the rebel positions and put on trial for desertion, mutiny and aiding the rebellion against the British. He was sentenced to transportation for life with labor in irons in 1857 and sent from Bombay to the Andaman Islands where he died in captivity on the 14th of July 1858. We salute the brave martyr Gangaram. That brings us to the end of this episode of Azadi Ka Safar with AIR News. See you in the next episode tomorrow. In cricket, India will take on England in the second one day international of three match series at Lords in London today. The match will begin at 5:30 p.m. Indian time. Rohit Sharma led Indian team had thrashed England by 10 wickets in the opening one day international at the Oval in London on Tuesday. The bowling attack of India certainly looked strong for the next match as well after the marvelous performance in the first match. The visitors will be eager for series win while the hosts would be aiming to come back. Indian team had already won three match T20 series against England by 2-1 In shooting the duo of Mihuli Ghosh and Shahu Tushar Mane bagged India's second gold medal in the 10M Air Rifle Mixed Team Final at the International Shooting Sport Federation World Cup stage at Changwon in South Korea Mihuli and Tushar outsmarted the Hungarian pair of Esther Mezraros and Istvan Pen 17-13 in an evenly poised match up the Indian pair of Palak and Shiva Narwal bagged bronze in the 10M Air Pistol Mixed event after clinching the third place playoff This is Tushar's maiden gold for India at the senior level. Mehuli bagged the second yellow medal having won her first at the 2019 South Asian Games in Kathmandu. With impressive results, India has now climbed up to the second position behind leader Serbia with two gold and one bronze medal. Earlier, India's Arjun Babuta had won his first gold medal in men's air rifle on Monday. And now let's take a look at the weather forecast for today. National capital Delhi will have a generally cloudy sky with light rain. Mumbai will have a generally cloudy sky with heavy rain. Chennai will have a generally cloudy sky with light rain. Kolkata will have a partly cloudy sky with one or two spells of rain or thunder showers. Srinagar, Jammu and Leh will have generally cloudy sky while Leh will have rain towards evening or evening at night. Gilgit will have a generally cloudy sky with possibility of rain. Muzaffarabad will have thunderstorm with rain. Hyderabad, Bengaluru will have generally cloudy sky. Kohima as well and Itanagar will have a generally cloudy sky with one or two spells of rain or thunder showers. Shillong will have a partly cloudy sky with one or two spells of rain or thunder showers. And now an overview of today's newspapers. The wrath of monsoons in Gujarat is widely noticed in all the dailies along with inflation easing in the month of June and developments in the island nation. In the Sun Times writes monsoon rain fury on nation's western coast while another story in the same daily writes uneven rain hits Kharif sowing. Retail inflation eases but still over 7% IIP hits 12 month high of 19.6% in May writes the Indian Express. The pioneer no will he won't he lanka on edge over president's resignation the asian age reports gotabaya seeks to escape by sea after airport standoff while the hindu says gotabaya stuck as us rejects visa request sena to support nda's president nominee murmu writes the pioneer while the hindu says udhav faction backs murmu supporting dwindling for sena and finally all dailies have carried breathtaking pictures of galaxies far far away captured by the james webb telescope offering never seen before views of distant cosmic objects the telescope is designed to peer back so far that scientists can get a glimpse of the dawn of the universe about 13.7 billion years ago and zoom in on closer cosmic objects even our solar system 
And now before we end the bulletin, the headlines once again. Prime Minister Modi to participate virtually in first ever I2U2 summit along with leaders of Israel, UAE and US today. People aged between 18 and 59 years to get free COVID booster doses from tomorrow at government centers. Defence Minister Rajnath Singh says India is witnessing a transitional phase towards self-reliance in defence sector. Sri Lankan Prime Minister Ranil Vikramasinghe asked military to take all necessary steps to restore order. Rishi Sunak talks first round of voting in UK Prime Minister's race. Annual Kamar Yatra begins today after a gap of two years. Mehuli Ghosh and Shahu Tushar Mane clinched gold for second goal for India in ISSF Shooting World Cup. And in cricket, India to take on England in second ODI of three mass series at Lords in London this evening. And with that, we end the morning news. Have a great day.